Hey everybody, it's me, Adrian, and today I'm gonna be talking about this painting I made recently and I actually managed to record it. So, welcome to this daily sketching episode. Waking up early in the morning is quite a struggle for most people very often, so I decided to push myself to improve my skills through this very, um, let's say disciplinary practice. And I think I heard it once on a live stream from Bobby Chu. And damn, <laughs> sorry, but just saying his name just reminds me to keep editing the video from Lightbox Expo in LA. So uh, I'll do that soon, I swear. But now let's keep talking about this. So I heard him say that the first time, like the first thing he does when he wakes up is to pick up his sketchbook and draw something right away. Like before doing anything else. Daily studies are a very consistent way to improve on a steady pace, and I see so many successful artists doing it that I decided to get out of this unproductive loop of mine, which consists of, you know, sketching something and only showing it if I fully finish it, you know, it's if I make it to be like a fully rendered artwork. So instead of sketching a crappy concept, I force myself to show it instead of deleting it. And since I give myself like a limited amount of time, uh, when the alarm goes off, it's like, it, it is what it is, you know, it's done, now I have to post it. And that doesn't mean I can't push it further later or maybe another day. This is the case with this painting, for instance, where, um, let's say, I basically woke up, I walked my dog, and I started painting like around 7 a.m. And I just wanted to draw some creatures or animals, and I love landscapes too, but in fact, you know, that was the first daily sketch I did which was yesterday. Um, so I'm still fresh on this practice, but I wanted to record all this to see how how consistent can I be with it, you know? I don't think I will record every single sketch I do, but it will, you know, it'll be cool to upload some of them as I talk about the process or any other thing. I think I really enjoy doing these kind of voiceover videos on my time lapses. So I, yeah, I just went ahead and I sketched a couple of tigers I started with this basic and rough line sketch and then added some values to it. And I think I should go back and watch again all those awesome Aaron Blaze videos where he paints animals. Like there's one where he, he was explaining the whole process, like first local color, then shadows on multiply, then lighting on overlay and so on. It's like a very detailed explanation. And I think I've been subconsciously trying to apply that here. Although I got lost with the stripes of the tiger, I think I should have painted them at the end. But still, I heard about applying color to a black and white image, for instance, using multiply. So when I reach a certain amount of layers, I, I tend to collapse them to work more comfortably. And I usually duplicate them so I don't lose the layers. But yeah, like from there on, it's just like going back and forth, trying different layer modes, sometimes even only brush modes. You know, it's like I work on a single layer and I only change the brush blending mode. So, you know, stuff like multiply, overlay, sometimes even color dodge, those are the ones I use the most besides normal mode. And I've heard some feedback on my art, like about my edges are not so well defined sometimes. And maybe that's the result of my obsession over this painterly effect, you know, like rough brushes instead of clean. Um, I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like it makes my stuff more blurry. So I sometimes try to clean that up without losing this painterly effect that I like so much. For instance, if it's a creature that has like fur, right? I, I would use a brush that has rough edges instead of a smooth one. And um, I haven't mentioned anything about the lighting, but I was exploring this kind of concept here where the face is in shadow and there's like a stripe of light slowly coming up and revealing like the whole subject. And if it was like an animation, I would do it like just like that, like a slow reveal of the character, you know? So I imagine his eyes to be like a subtle focus point on the image, even if they are in the shadow. So this would actually allow me to make him glow and get some more contrast here. And also this contrast between warms and cools, which you can see especially in the whites on, on the tiger's belly or the neck. So see, after exploring the second sketch, I decided, 
you know, it was just better to improve the first one. And I was so happy with it that I even added like an environment. I had no idea where this was going. It's just a sketch, right? So I thought that now that I have already added that mysterious lighting, which I think adds a little bit of storytelling, I thought, let's add an environment to support some of this narrative. And I thought of some sort of medieval prison cell with stone walls, nothing but the creature. And I haven't really told you guys too much about my personal IP yet, but when I was getting to this point with the image, I thought of making this part of it as well. So I went on and added the character from my previous video to this scene, and he's like sitting there next to the creature, like if they've been imprisoned and someone just opens the cell door and this light beam hits the path that leads to the characters. So I don't know, I was just starting to see this working somehow. I even added some skeletons at the end that you will see in the final image. And then I thought to myself, but this guy is not corresponding to this beast. His creature is white and fluffy, right? Well, you can see it on my website or on our station. So I said, hmm, okay, maybe he's actually on a rescue mission to free this tiger beast and his actual creature is maybe taking care of the surroundings to distract the security guards. I don't know, just ideas, right, floating in my head. But it gets me going, so I hope I can make more of these. I have a lot of fun with this, and I'll see you in the next video. So, you know, remember, you can follow me on Instagram, where I usually post the sketches I make. And, uh, yeah, all right, guys, that's, that's it for today, I guess. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode. But until then, take care, stay creative, and have a good one. Bye-bye, guys.